neither of them have been good this season. Uh, I, I mean, to put it pretty plainly, they've both been bad this season. The offense is fine. Latang has three points in seven games, two of those three points being goals. Carlson has five points in seven games, a goal and four assists, but it's not been enough to outweigh how bad they've been defensively. We never expected them to be the best shutdown defenseman the NHL has ever seen, but it's gotten to a new level of bad this season, and it's tearing down the entire unit because it's not just them. The entire team defensively has been very bad. Is there a point, though, with these two, that you become okay with the defense being crappy because the offensive production becomes so overwhelming? And what is that point, if so? I don't think there is, just because you need to have tighter defense. Your goaltending is not bailing you out this year. Yeah. So it's not a matter of any of that. With the goaltending looking the way it is and something we'll discuss in a few minutes, you just need to have tighter defense. I don't care how how much – uh, the team is scoring. I don't care if the bottom six is ramping up its offense the way it should be. I don't care if Sidney Crosby finds his rhythm. I don't care if Genny Malkin is continuing this pace. Um, your defense needs to be defense, needs to play defense. Mm-hmm. It's I've said it a gazillion times. It's literally the name of the position. Yeah. You have to be able to do that. Um, Chris Tang's got a couple of goals. That's all well and good. And he can keep that up too. It's just a matter of leading by example defensively. I mean, those are the two that this entire defensive core will look to mm-hmm. um, as the leaders. And I'm sure everyone will understand that, you know, these guys aren't going to be world beaters defensively. They're not. They're not going to be your shutdown pair. You're not, they're not going to be the, um, I mean, Chris Tank kills penalties, but they're not going to be those stout defensive names that are, out there for the sole purpose of shutting down. No, they're out there to create offense. Heck, they get paired together whenever it's time to really find some offense. Uh, and the rest of the defense will understand that, but they still need to lead by example and at least look like they're doing good defensively, like they're holding their own defensively. Uh, and when those two are faltering, I mean, we're still waiting for more from Ryan Graves. We're still waiting to see if Matt Grizzly can do anything uh, of substance. And uh, who's left? Who am I missing? Marcus Pedersen has not looked the same this year. No, he is. That's not. fun. And then Ryan Shea, Jack St. Ivan. I mean, at the really are those two NHLers at this point? It's getting to that question. It's getting to that point. All six blue liners have not looked, I don't want to say not looked serviceable, but haven't looked great to start the season. And I mean, it kind of it doesn't play hand in hand totally but there is a little bit of a venn diagram between good defense and good goaltending and right now the penguins aren't getting either but if one of them if the defense can step up then maybe the goaltending can follow suit a little bit because they're facing fewer high danger chances yeah i I mean you look at the whole team most goals allowed in the nhl so far with 31 31 goals in seven games is ridiculous a worst goals against per 60 minutes which is 4.27. So even though the offense has been much better this year, the bottom six is scoring, like you mentioned, the defense is pitching in when they can, which is great. You need to score at least five goals a game just to win. You need to score at least four goals a game just to be in the game. That is far from sustainable, especially for a team that right now, you know, has a good power play. Does that go out the window? And when it does, what, what are you left with, right? What are you left with at that point? So, when you look at the defensive performance here, I think that, yeah, there is a point where if they're scoring so much offensively, then you look past it for those two players. But they're not at that point, and they're not anywhere near that point. It is over a point per game that you need to be scoring if you're Carlson and Latang. And you know what else ha- has to happen? Pedersen has to be great defensively. Grizzlick has to be great defensively. Your third pairing needs to look like it did late last season when Shea and St. Ivany were making all of us question whether or not they would be the third pairing of the future. That hasn't happened, and neither has the Penguins offense been amazing from both Carlson and Latang. So they do, as you mentioned, need to spearhead this effort to say, hey, we need to be better defensively. They're the leaders of this group, and mm-hmm. you can say what you want about Eric Carlson. You mentioned it. He is never going to be a stout defensive defenseman. He's made some nice plays at times. He just needs to do that more often and maybe take a little bit less risk. I, I understand you're kind of handcuffing him at the same time, when you do that, you're not really getting Eric Carlson out of Eric Carlson. But right now, 
you are getting good production out of Kevin Hayes. You're getting great production out of Lars Eller. For a little while, can we settle things down on the back end just to ensure that the Penguins can find their footing defensively? Because the worst goals allowed per 60 minutes in the NHL is not a team that typically finds their way into the playoffs. And when you look at that stat and you break it down defenseman by defenseman, it's not the bottom pairing. It's not the bottom pairing. When you look at the worst expected goals against per 60 minutes at five on five, individual players, there are 75 players that kind of qualify, which means they played 90 plus minutes. 70th is Matt Grizzlick. 73rd, 74th, and 75th of 75 are Latang, Carlson, and Pedersen. That is your top four. That is far from good enough. Oh, that made my head hurt. Um, A lot of numbers, I know, but let's just put it this way. As far as playing defense, yeah, Penguins have four of the worst six in the NHL right now. And it's their top four. It's not It's not Ryan Graves. It's not Ryan Graves. It's not Jackson Ivory. It's not Ryan Shea. It is the four guys that you're paying the most money to be your defenseman. I mean, it's not Ryan Graves. And uh, for what it's worth, Ryan Graves has played over 90 minutes. He's got 104. So he's on that list somewhere. Yes. That's, that's a I, step in the right direction. You don't yeah. need to find it if you don't want to. But it's getting... So it's getting so bad. It's getting so bad out there for that because say what you want about a new, a new defensive coach. It's the same system, brother. It's the same thing. Pretty much You're If tell, tell Eric Carlson to mitigate the risk that the risks that he's taking, it'll be fine in the long term because again, it, it, the scoring will come to Eric Carlson. There's no doubt about that. It, the power play is looking decent and he's a big part of it. Whereas if you mitigate the risk a little bit on five and five for him, the the offense will follow. The offense will find him eventually. It at this point, while the offense finds everybody because the scoring has not been good for the Penguins, play defense, play your position, play the namesake of your position. And when this experiment because you also have to figure the penguins are still in an experimental period. Look at them healthy scratching bunting. A bunch of guys are in the minors. Look at them, regardless of what Mike Sullivan wants to call it, healthy scratching, Tristan Jari. Yeah. Uh, there's clearly still some experiments happening here. One of them should be Eric Carlson playing a more conservative style of defense and then let the offense roll after that. Because we said last episode how bad the defense has been. Mm-hmm. And I said then, by the time by the next time we talk, it should be a little bit more squared away. We're talking again, and it's not. So this is bad. Yeah. By the way, Ryan Graves is number twenty on that list. If if all right, here's the fun part. Because if you would have said Ryan Graves is twenty on that list last year, well, man, the Penguins defense is kicking butt and taking names in that case. Well, here's the thing: it's also per sixty minutes, and Ryan Graves doesn't play well. Never mind. You know what? Because I, I put out a stat today on Twitter that says he has the third highest percentage of, I believe it's five on five ice time. So I don't know. I mean, he was not good on Sunday. Sunday was probably his worst game, but he hadn't been horrible leading up to that point, which is probably why he's here. Whereas the rest of the defense has been God awful. And I know expectations are a little bit different when it comes to what you expect from Grizzly, what you expect from Latang, what you expect from Carlson and Pedersen versus what you're expecting from Ryan Graves coming off the worst season of his professional life. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the end of the day, that top four needs to be much better because if Ryan Graves is that far ahead of you in any category, you know you're not in a good situation defensively. No, yeah, it's that's what I said. Like if if you were to say that all five defensemen or all all the, the other five defensemen that are normally in the lineup are ahead of him in this situation. Like mm-hmm. I said, well, all right, that means the Penguins defense is rocking and rolling. Whereas he's standing at 20 and everyone else is 50 players behind him. Yeah. Have fun with that. Yeah. So, I mean, the Penguins, we talked about the defense a lot on Thursday, which is why this is the second segment and not the first segment, because the defense is the worst part of the Penguins right now. The goaltending is the most interesting, but let's let's face it. Nadelkovich, for large stretches of that game on Sunday, looked pretty good, and it was his season debut. Mm-hmm. Lunkfist, for most of his stint so far, has been pretty good. It's the defense that is the, the most detrimental piece to this entire puzzle right now. 
I know that the Penguins need better goaltending. They do, but two things can be true at the same time, and one thing can be more true. And the one thing that's more true is the Penguins are bad defensively. So that is going to continue to be a major topic of conversation.